the effect of UV exposure on SOD3 expression and pharyngeal pumping rates in DAF2 and DAF2, DAF16 mutant C. elegans. Since aging, as well as seeing loved ones age, invokes an emotional response, humans naturally seek to understand the underlying mechanism. The microscopic roundworm, C. elegans, has become a model organism for studying senescence, as well as responses to stress. This nematode is homologous for 70% of human genes. In fact, the first pathway involved with aging processes was discovered in C. elegans by Cynthia Kenyon and colleagues, and is conserved throughout the animal kingdom. The insulin IGF-1 mediated signaling pathway in C. elegans is controlled by two major genes, DAF2 and DAF16. DAF2 encodes for a receptor tyrosine kinase, which in humans is homologous to the insulin and IGF-1 receptors. The main target of the IIS pathway is DAF16, which is a forked head FOXO homolog. The FOXO family is made up of transcription factors which turn on genes coding for antioxidants, cell repair, and DNA repair. Cynthia Kenyon found that strain E1370, which is a loss of function DAF2, lived twice as long as wild type C. elegans suggesting that the target of this gene works to promote lifespan. Not surprisingly, in wild-type C. elegans, DAF2 causes DAF16 to be phosphorylated, so it cannot enter the nucleus to activate the lifespan-promoting genes. When DAF2 is mutated, the tyrosine receptor activity is inhibited, and DAF16 is able to enter the nucleus to activate the life-promoting genes. Studies have also shown that when C. elegans are exposed to stressful environmental conditions such as food shortages, they go into a life-extending dour state. Interestingly enough, DAF2 becomes less active and DAF16 more active. Such findings indicate that mechanisms involved with stress response are also responsible for longevity. In our experiment, we have the chance to work with the same loss of function DAF2 mutants as Cynthia Kenyon, as well as a double loss of function DAF2, DAF16 double mutant. We wanted to test whether the DAF2 mutant would be more resistant to stress than the wild type and DAF2, DAF16 C. elegans. We exposed DAF2 mutants, wild type C. elegans, and the double DAF2, DAF16 mutants to UV and counted their pharyngeal pumping rates. We hypothesized that the DAF2's pharyngeal pumping rates would be least affected by UV and the double mutant the most affected, resulting in decreased pumping rates. Additionally, the mutants we were given had a fluorescently labeled SOD3 gene, which encodes an iron manganese dismutase. This dismutase defends animals against oxidative stress and is a target of DAF16. We compared the fluorescence of SOD3 in DAF2 and DAF2, DAF16 with no UV exposure and after UV exposure. We hypothesized that the DAF2 mutants would show the most fluorescence since studies indicate that mutations of DAF16 diminish SOD3 activity. We performed a worm sink in order to have all of our C. elegans specimens at the same life stage. We began with two plates of each type of C. elegans strain that we worked with. We added M9 buffer, bleach, and sodium hydroxide to each of these plates. We transferred the contents of each set of plates to one of three tubes which was centrifuged at 2,000 RPM for two minutes. The resulting pellets were then washed with M9 buffer two more times to make sure they were free of worm tissue and leftover bleach solution. The solution added dissolved any living worms but left eggs safe. We were then able to transfer the eggs to new plates. We transferred the eggs from each strain onto three new plates, 
exposing one plate from each strain to either 0 seconds of UV light, 10 seconds of UV light, or 30 seconds of UV light. However, after allowing time for the eggs to hatch, we discovered that our DAF2 30 second UV treatment plate had no C. elegans on it. Therefore, we included no 30 second treatment data from any strain in our final analysis. Under a microscope, we counted the pharyngeal pumps of five worms per plate. We then conducted an ANOVA analysis to determine whether the UV light decreased pharyngeal pumping rates in each strain, and whether or not there was a difference in pharyngeal pumping rates between each strain. Additionally, we compared SOD3 expression between DAF2 and DAF2, DAF16 mutants, both with the plates exposed to 0 seconds of UV and to 10 seconds of UV. The total corrected SOD3 fluorescence values were calculated using the Fiji software, and an ANOVA was conducted to see whether UV treatment affects SOD3 expression and to see how each mutation affects SOD3 expression. Observances under the fluorescent microscope were fundamental for determining variances of SOD3 activity in DAF2 versus DAF2, DAF16 mutants in response to UV exposure. SOD3 activity was significantly more expressed in DAF2 compared to the DAF2, DAF16 mutants. Additionally, DAF2, DAF16 SOD3 activity was localized in the pharynx, while in the DAF2 mutants, it was spread out through the pharynx, vulva, and tail. The high levels of SOD3 activity in DAF2 are due to the suppression of the tyrosine kinase channels, allowing DAF16 to activate SOD3 activity. On the other hand, in the DAF2, DAF16 mutants, DAF16 has diminished activity and cannot properly activate SOD3. Since there was no significant effect of the UV treatment on SOD3 fluorescence in both mutants, further experiments could be done to see if UV stress affects SOD3 expressions. These experiments could use longer exposure to UV light. The pharyngeal pumping rate analysis was useful for observing neuromuscular changes in response to stress. DAF2 mutants had significantly higher pharyngeal pumping rates than wild-type and DAF2, DAF16 C. elegans, both with no UV exposure and after UV exposure. Wild-type C. elegans also had higher pharyngeal pumping rates than DAF2, DAF16 mutants. Additionally, UV exposure decreased pharyngeal pumping rates in all three of the worm strains. This is incongruous with other studies that suggest pharyngeal pumping rates do not decrease in the long-lived DAF2 mutants. Our inconclusive results may be due to errors in counting, and further studies should be conducted to evaluate the effect of UV exposure on pharyngeal pumping rates. Studies have shown that pharyngeal pumping decreases with aging. Thus, our experiment further shows how mechanisms involved with aging are also responsible for responses to stress. In conclusion, the DAF2 mutants not only live longer, but also have increased resistance to stress. These findings, along with other studies, suggest that the DAF2 mutations may delay the onset of age-related diseases or outcomes to stressful environmental conditions. Further studies with C. elegans could be crucial to finding a drug which directly targets aging pathways in humans and could delay the onset of age-related diseases, such as Parkinson's. Currently, IGF-1 and insulin-suppressing mutations, such as DAF-2, have also increased lifespan in mice and other organisms. These long-lived mutant organisms foreshadow the possibility of increasing human lifespan via RNA interference molecules.